I once stated that the problem with mysteries is that even if you solve them, even if you arrive at the answer, ten more questions will appear. So you're always solving questions and never coming nearer to the great truth. This story shall give you an answer, but it may raise even more questions, some that might make you feel uncomfortable. But I will remind you that time keeps ticking on, and you never know what's going to be revealed. The files of Flint Burns are many. He is a true enigma here at the Fireside Tales. But one of my favorites is when he and his best friends, Maryland and Simon Harker, were going to the Hall residence to solve a 100-year-old mystery. They had been invited by John Harker, who had also invited his new partner, Lennox Martin. Lennox was a rather nervous man, but you could tell he had the best of intentions. But as they were going down the road, Simon turned to Flint and asked, Flint, you, do you know the real reason why you were invited? No, said Flint. Why? And um, Simon said, Because Dad wants you to solve the mystery. And Marilyn laughed at this. Um, so, uh, Flint said, Oh, uh, I'm not entirely sure that's true. But the, he had a smile on his face, for indeed it seemed that John was always wanting Flint to help solve the case. He didn't like to admit it to John. He always liked to say that he didn't even like Flint. But there was that understanding between the two of them. But as they rode up to the hall's residence, they were greeted by an old woman. She introduced herself as Ingrid Hall, and although she was old, you could tell there had been a time she was very beautiful. She had dazzling blue eyes, and she led them in to the home. Now, Flint Burns was the last to step in, and the first thing he noticed was a marble statue of a cat with red glass eyes. The whole place was very nice, very well kept, no dust on the counters or anything, no cobwebs. But uh, there was a picture of an old hall with a bunch of people in it. There was a suit of armor, there was a bookcase, there was a table with a whole bunch of files set on it. And in the corner of the room was an old man with a cane and a pipe in his mouth, who Ingrid introduced as her brother Talon. Talon did not seem to be happy that they were there, but he mumbled and grumbled a uh, hello. And Ingrid said, Oh, I do so hope that you will be able to help us, John. This mystery has been around since I was a little girl, and I really want to know what happened to my father. Well, John said, Don't get your hopes too much up. This is a hundred-year-old mystery. It's unlikely we'll be able to solve it. But why don't you tell us the story? Well, she said, there was a time when my brother and I were in the height of wealth. My father was um, quite a rich man. He had came from Denmark here to the Americas and made himself a home. Oh, we were quite the um, height of luxury back in those times. But then the tragedy occurred, and my brother and I invested wrong, and now we don't have any, even any maids or butlers to take care of this place. Nobody to help us out of the hole that we have dug ourselves in. Even the boulevards and the atoms and the dark woods have turned on us. Such is the way of time, she said. It ruins everything. Damn it, she said. She hadn't meant to say this last part. It had just came out. But she um, kneeled down and um, she said, I I'll tell you the full story, but there's the files on the table if you want to read through them as I talk. I'm not the most interesting of person, according to my brother. Indeed, said Talon. I don't know why you bother um, digging up this old... Digging up this endless hole, he said. It's just making you look like a fool. We're never going to figure out what happened. Well, said Lennox, 
Well, why don't you just go over the case anyways? I'd, I'd love to hear it. This is my first time. Well, anyway, she, Ingrid said, oh, oh, all right. And so she began the story, and as she told it, it, it felt as if, for all of them, that they were there. But she said, as I mentioned, my father was a great man. He, my mo he had my mother, who was also a very beautiful woman, Sasa. But the two of them lived happily together. The only problem was that my dad did love to go out to the bars and drink and get himself into fights. This is when my father and my uncle got into a row. Uh, the two of them, I don't even know if they remember why they started it, but it ended with Morton having a, a broken wine glass right up to my father's neck. <sighs> Fortunately, nothing happened, but the two of them weren't close at all after that, and they became even less close when Grandmother died and left her entire fortune to my father. Well, the only problem with that was that if my father died, all the money was to be left to Morton. But this immediately caused strife. However, luckily, my mother was good friends with Morton. Indeed, I think Morton wanted to be more than friends with my mother. But she got an agreement to uh, go to their house and have dinner. And when Eric and Sasa arrived... Eric felt that he was sure his brother was going to kill him, and when he told uh, Sasa this, she said, Oh, that's ridiculous. Why would he do such a thing? He's your own brother. But he, he swore it. And as they entered the room and they sat down at the, the um, dining table, in fact, they were sitting in the kitchen right back there, um, Morton began um, to explain that he wanted to make peace, that he was willing to make peace, and Father said he was even willing to give some of the money up, but um, as they were, um, but as the maids and the butlers were setting up the table, my father looked at Morton for a second and said, "Morton, did you poison this food?" And he um, shook his head. "Don't, don't be ridiculous. H how could you make such an accusation against me?" And um, he um, pointed to um, Morton's food. Well, then go ahead and eat. Morden took a piece of his own food and uh, gobbled it down. And Eric said, uh, Go ahead and take a bite out of mine, then, too. Right here, he said, pointing at the end of the chicken. Morden walked up and he took a piece of the chicken and he took a bite out of it. And, he s said Morden, the wine glass can't be poisoned either because it came from the same glass that I am drinking out of. And he sat back down at the table. So if you are satisfied, let's talk about mending old wounds. And so finally, they all began talking, and it was a pleasant conversation. Morton was actually a perfect gentleman, and Sasa seemed to be having a, a good time finally. She was glad that her husband had just let it go, and finally been willing to accept um, this man into her life, his own brother. But as they were talking, Eric began to feel sicker and sicker. He began to complain about aches in his stomach, and he, he went out and he decided he was going to sit down on the couch in the study. And my, uh, and uh, as um, Sasa and um, Morden were talking, thinking that they would they were just going to let him uh, uh, sleep it off, they heard a scream from the maid, and they, they, they both ran into the study to find that Eric had died only just a few minutes after he had went into the room. His eyes were misty and his skin pale white. And so um, that was seemed to be the end of the story, with most people assuming more than had to have killed Eric, although no one could figure out how. And eventually, um, they gathered together um, a, a little funeral for him, and I, I, my brother and I attended, and, well, my mother ended up marrying Morton. The two of them um, uh, stayed together for just a few years, but eventually my mother, for no reason given, committed suicide. And I was left to wonder exactly what happened, what had caused this. 
Morden himself would die later of illness, maybe brought on by my mother's death. He had always been good to us, I won't deny, my uncle, and I, I do respect him, but I do want to know what happened all those years ago. And, um, yeah, she sat there in silence for a moment. Everyone respected this silence. But Lennox Martin said, It sounds to me that maybe the maid had something to do with it. I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't go into the room and poison him while everyone else was um, talking. John Harker couldn't help but chuckle at this thought, but he said, All right, well, let's go out into the kitchen and check it out. Maybe look around the room. Well, anyways, they all left, except Flint, um, Marilyn, and Simon, who decided to stay behind. Um, Marilyn turned to Flint and said, So what do you think? Who, who do you think did it? Do you think it really could have been the maid? And I think Saucer might have had something to do with it. Hmm, said Flint. Yes, it's all very interesting. But there's something even more interesting here. Around this room. He stood up and he began looking around. Yes, very interesting. He went over to the bookshelf and began to look at um, the um, all of the books, and then he, he, he went over to the marble cat and stared into its eyes for a moment, and then he smiled. I think that I've solved the mystery, he said, and he sat back down, and um, Marilyn and Simon looked at each other, knowing that he wasn't going to reveal it until... Everyone was present, and the moment had arrived. But um, as um, the three of them were sitting there, they did indeed come through the door, just a few seconds. They hadn't even been in, out there that long. But um, uh, John uh, looked over at Flint and noticed that there was that glint in his eyes, and he said, What? What did you end up f uncovering? And Flint said, Well, I believe I've solved the mystery. If everyone will gather around... Everyone did, and um, Ingrid uh, seemed to be a little bit um, perturbed that Flint was the one speaking, and she couldn't help but wonder why it was this teenager was about ready to say that he had solved the case. But Flint said, The murderer is John Harker. Everyone was very silent at this, and um, Talon said, Preposterous! How could it have been him? That was a hundred years ago. That doesn't make any sense at all. Well, said Flint, it, it wasn't exactly, um, John Harker. The truth is that what happened at the dinner table, I believe is what you all are trying to say happened at the dinner table, was that the poison was indeed placed in Eric's food, but Morton had an antidote which he put into his own wine glass. It would have been easy to slip it in. But that isn't the true mystery here. The true mystery is what's going on in this room. You see, I notice that though the two of you don't have servants, and are elderly, to be honest, you were able to clean this place up rather nice. No dust, no cobwebs anywhere. This isn't too unusual in and of itself. After all, people clean up their house when guests are arriving. But what really struck me was that marble cat over there, and the fact that when Ingrid was telling that story, she spoke so loudly, as if she wanted to be heard. And then as, as I was looking in the eyes of the marble cat, I noticed a camera inside of it. We are all, as I speak, on a television show. And Marilyn looked over at John, and John said, Well... He figured it out. Everybody can come out now. And at that moment, uh, people were coming out from outside and um, out from other rooms. And the whole film crew was there, and Flint Burns explained. So, what is this ex... Uh, so, what, what is... And he didn't explain, but he said, So, what is this exactly? Uh, some kind of mystery show? Yeah, said a man. It was a big fat man. Looked like the director. It was this um, mystery theater show. We were hoping to use this footage uh, for an episode, but then you were able to figure it out. Quite a clever young boy you are. Was it our acting? said Ingrid. Well, I hope it wasn't. I, I think I played the damsel very well. 
And Von Bern said, The two of you were fine. I just happened to notice these sort of things. But anyways, they all had a good time laughing about it. And as they um, went out, Flint, Maryland, and Simon outside to take a break, uh, Simon said, Well, that was really clever of you. I guess the clues were all around and we just weren't paying attention to them. They always are, said Flint. If anything is ever fake, it seems that the clues are always sprinkled everywhere. Well, said Marilyn, uh, is, it, is it possible that in life there's clues pointing to everything being fake? Maybe we're still on a reality show. Oh, said Flint Burns, don't be absurd. But Noah, I mean, Simon couldn't help but notice that there was a smile on Flint's face.